So let me introduce your hosts for the next 45 minutes. We have George Wilson, who's Head of Sales and Operations for Original Software, and Jonathan Pearson, who's the Pre-Sales Consultancy Manager for Original Software. So please, would you welcome George and Jonathan? Over to you, George and Jonathan. Thank you very much, Mark. This is George. Jonathan, say hello. Hi. Thank you for coming to this uh, session. Um, we're going to run for about half an hour, and uh, hopefully you'll find it informative. So we want to talk about application quality management, application lifecycle management, particularly focused on the area of uh, quality assurance, and where the market has been where and where it's going and what's changed in that time. And I think perhaps the, the first thing to recognize is that the big gorilla in the marketplace for many years has been what was the HP product, HP Quality Center slash ALM that we all know and has certainly served many of us well for, for many years as a kind of robust and reliable solution. But sadly, uh, things have changed a little bit. The world has moved on and the feedback that we get is that that product has not perhaps moved on as rapidly as the rest of the world has. And this is reflected in a survey that was carried out um, where people were asked their thoughts on the HPLM solution. Obviously, now that's micro focus. And maybe some of the data here reflects the change of ownership of well, as well. But 40% of those people surveyed. Um, complained that, that the costs had increased substantially. Maybe that's something you found as well. Clearly, with an investment being made, then that investment needs to be uh, recouped, but it's probably an ongoing thing uh, anyway. That probably leads on to poor value. Well, value is not just a question of how much you pay, it's also what you get from it. And I think that that reflects the lack of development and investment in the solution Somebody told me the other day that, in fact, they thought it had regressed since the days of Mercury Test Director, and it was less capable now, so I can't, can't comment on that. But clearly, I think people now need a more sophisticated, more advanced, easier-to-use solution, uh, easier-to-adapt solution to individual companies' needs, and something that is perhaps a little less departmentally siloed and is more of a... Uh, cross IT collaboration platform. So as a result, 38% of the people in this survey, and this was last year, I suspect this was probably increased now, uh, are actively looking to replace that HP quality center solution. One of the reasons for that is that um, most people have had to customize it, and that's not necessarily a bad thing, but behind, hidden behind that statement is the fact that it is actually quite hard uh, to customize, and that's not something that you kind of people want to do really if it's hard work and it's not then maintainable very, very easily. There are other frustrations that people reported to do with the product. Its ability to integrate with other solutions is clunky, it's there, it's hard to do. Um, limited functionality, uh, particularly around reporting, it was deemed to be particularly poor, <clears throat> its inability to adapt to people's changing uh, processes so that uh, if people are working in different ways, then it's very hard to reflect that in quality center and make it work the way you want to work rather than being forced to work in its kind of traditional uh, requirements and test plans and, and uh, test lab defect type structure. These days, people have more sophisticated methods of, of working and building and delivering software solutions, particularly where, for example, users are also involved in user acceptance testing. Uh, and that leads on to introducing the original software product suite. And it is an integrated set of components there aimed at helping you deliver quality software as rapidly as possible so the business gets what it needs, it gets uh, value added to the business, and it gets software that works correctly to their requirements. 
as well as software that they can understand and use. Now, we're going to focus on the piece in the middle here, which is actually a piece of software we call Qualify. It is really a complete IT management solution. It's really an ERP system for IT, but it certainly supports the needs of the QA team as one of those groups uh, represented there. It is highly customizable, highly configurable, and very much aligned with the modern needs of an IT organization. Okay. So <clears throat> we want to talk about some particular facets of this, which I think are uh, important in the context of what we just discussed, where there are weaknesses in the HP solution. Uh, configurability and adaptability, um, that's important. We work in similar ways, but no two organizations work exactly the same. You want to be able to easily adapt the information to your needs, and we're going to show you how we deal with that. You also need to be able to work uh, across teams and across projects so that you may work in different methods across those different projects whether they be waterfall or agile you may have people who who provide different roles in different projects and you want to have a, a visibility within the project within different programs um, covering multiple projects or for the organization as a whole and so it's important for us that we deliver that uh, detailed level of inf information as well as the macro level of information that enables IT to operate effectively and plan. <coughs> One of the other things that we're particularly strong on and the HP solution is particularly weak on is resource management and planning. And we'll show you how we deal with that. Clearly, particularly the bigger team you have, the more distributed it is using those resources effectively is an important goal for a test manager or anybody else running a program and so you need certain information to be able to plan and to organize resources workflow uh, without having to write code you can do workflow in the hp products microfocus products but it's very complicated it's very complicated to set up and implement uh, and then maintain it's important to be able to do that without having to write code and yet still maintain all the functionality you need, the electronic signatures and everything else that you might want to go with it. Oops, I missed the button there. Right. Um, MI reporting. Um, obviously, running this type of project, you need data to support what you're doing. We'll show you how easy it is to get the data that you need in the format we need regardless of what type of methodology that you're running. And we recognize that most people don't just have Agile or Waterfall or sometimes a combination thereof. They will be running different projects in different styles. And the last thing you want to do is have different platforms to support those different projects and set yourself up with another distributed solution. So. It would be great to have all that information in one place, which is our goal. And finally, a very cost-effective solution, and I have a very interesting proposal to make to you at the end of this presentation, which hopefully you'll find relevant. So we want to take those subjects uh, in turn and first talk about um, configurability, and Jonathan's going to talk about that. Thank you, George. Yes, yeah, so configurability, adaptability. Um, there are many ways that people set up QA systems, IT management systems these days, um, it's actually, the people that I speak to anyway, it's quite rare for people to take one methodology and stick with it. So even the people who say that Agile, when you look into that, I mean, um, you get phrases like Wagile or Fragile, <laughs> it's quite often used where people have adopted some aspects of the Agile methodology, but then there are other aspects that are patently waterfall. So the ability to configure and adapt to a company's specific way of working is actually very important. Uh, gone are the days where you can get away with, oh, let's hold a test plan, a test case, a defect, um, maybe some requirements over here. Uh, we now need to get in much more detail of, about what people actually want to hold and the processes that they've developed over years, uh, what they need to be. Um, so within um, Qualify, you can 
create your own model basically you can create your own way of working so uh, an example would be a multi QA um, informational repository type approach um, it may well be that you want to go down um, a simplistic approach where you're, you're rolling out a greenfield implementation across multiple countries um, with some set specific scenarios so the, the one that you can see there was used to roll out a, a Fiori um, SAP HANA front end through um, different European states um, and with standard test scenarios and, and test processes that have been brought in from SAP. Um, or you may want to go down a, a, a more traditional Scrum Agile approach with sprints, epics, user stories, you know, that kind of thing. Uh, the, the key point to get across is if you have a configurable model, if you can adapt it to what people actually want, and this is going to be in the long run much better for your organization. Uh, you're no longer trying to squeeze what you do into what a product can do, uh, where uh, as you used to do, you're now working the other way around and saying, actually, I want the solution that I've got to squeeze into um, the way that I work. And Johnny, how how difficult is it to do this configuration or, or make changes? Um, it's actually, we, we come on site and we'll, we'll do some consultancy with you, we'll sit there, we'll go through what your processes are, um, and it's, you know, one or two days, it's not, it's not a massive overhead, um, we actually do it for you, uh, even though you're involved in the consultancy process all the way through. But it's something the client can maintain themselves going forward if they want to add a new field and that sort of thing, that's easy enough to do. Absolutely. We go through the full training process with them um, and when we leave, they will have a working model that works according to what they require and they will know how to adapt it moving forward. So, um, I mean, this even actually goes down to um, what type of attributes each of these things hold. So, you know, we don't give you a standard defect. We say, here's a defect. What type of information do you want to hold for a defect? And we can go through that as well. So multi-project cross-team collaboration, it's always been a bit of a bugbear with needing to bring in separate databases and separate um, projects with, with um, ALM. Uh, it's something that we're particularly strong on. It doesn't matter how many projects you've got running. As you mentioned previously, George, it doesn't matter. Actually, you may have one team that's doing waterfall for a specific reason. You may have another team that's, that's um, producing constant change uh, that's using a more agile or Kanban methodology. But that doesn't matter. We can take a view of these things and we can look across the board and see where everything is. And why would you want to do that? Well, what if I wanted to get an overview as a departmental level, what defects I currently have outstanding? I could go through and I could look at all the separate projects, I could see what works outstanding, I could look at the different teams and the different waves and the different iterations, or I can get that one single unified view across, um, and therefore I can plan uh, my resources much more effectively to deal with the current situation at hand. Um, also, it, it, you may have three, four different scrum teams, for example, you might want to bring all that information together on the different runs uh, with the projects. And Ultimately, what, what this leads to is giving you the information you need to make the business critical decisions right now, not per project, but per multiple projects for all your resources, looking at everything that's going on. And what does this lead to? It's better resource planning and management. So we, we have the full visibility to see who's doing what, when they're doing it. It's very easy to reallocate tasks. Uh, based on the information you've got about work allocation. Um, we can actually go, go through and we can future plan with projected percentage utilization uh, for, for a given resource over one or multiple projects, as we've mentioned previously. So you can see where people are being under and overutilized. You can then take that information, you can reassign the different uh, tasks that are going on. You can actually move people from <coughs> team to team. Um, and from um, QA project to QA project. I think I'm right in saying, Johnny, that first slide you've got there is kind of a, at a high level sort of program planning sort of stage. So you can do that as well, can't you? Yeah, I mean, the, 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 if this is not just as we're going through it, um, what's going on, you can plan out into the future. Uh, you can say, look, I'll probably need three business analysts, two developers, three QA people in three months time and they're probably for a couple of weeks each 
Um, after that, you can then come into when it gets closer, assigning the actual individual jobs, what week they need to be done, what percentage utilization. So it can take it at both levels as a uh, far out future planning tool, but also what is happening next week, what's happening right now at, at a more granular detail level. And a couple of clients I've been working with recently, and I don't know whether this is um, a bit of a trend, but they've also wanted to hold timesheet information so people book their time against their tasks, um, perhaps for costing purposes, but also for estimation purposes, so that we know that if we estimated something at 20 hours and in the end it took us 30 hours, what, what do we learn from that? So it supports that as well, doesn't it, Johnny? Yeah, I mean, um, we can, not only does it support the logging of time, but it, you can log it against specific tasks, specific areas, and um, you can see where your overruns came from, you can look at previous projects, you can work out where the time, extra time is spent with the full reporting capabilities and you can plan um, appropriately moving forward. So yes, you can do all of that. The other concept that's been really quite powerful for our users, and, and we're not unique in <coughs> the only people having this capability, but once again, it's so simple to do, there's no code needed. We can go through and we can implement workflow control over your different processes. Now, when you're working with pharmaceutical companies, when you're working with um, legal entities um, and like payroll and, and legal requirements like that, it can be quite important to specify a, a workflow. And as you mentioned previously, George, you may even want to get electronic signatures at the different gates needed to push through a project. So this can be done at multiple levels. The example that you see on the screen is a simple workflow for a defect, but you know you can also do this type of thing. You can do it for uh, um, requirements. You can do it for projects even. Uh, you can you can apply this to multiple levels, even going through how your test cases are built and and how they're utilised. But once again, it's the speed and ease of creation and. We can train you how to do this in half an hour and you would be then up and running and you can create any number of these that, that you wanted. The management reporting. Um, once you start going down the route of specifying the types of um, artifacts that you have for your management, and this literally could be all the way from de development through to live, um, once you specify your workflows, once you plan your resources, um, it's different for every company and you need a flexible and easy way to get management reporting out. You can't rely on standard reports because the model is not standard. So we needed to make it as simple as possible uh, to chart anything. Uh, Real-time reporting as well. I, I want to click the button and I want to see it now. Um, both paper traditional reporting, but also dashboard views, which are very important. And dashboard views that can be viewed on mobile devices, iPads, iPhones, and through the, the web front ends. Uh, we have a lot of customers that uh, may use a, a sort of traditional GUI for the people who are actually doing the testing, but then all the management information reporting comes through simple web portals. Uh, through our web front end, people log in and they can get the dashboards that are specific to them. We can show transitional data changing, so how many defects have been created today versus closed, what statuses are they moving through, where are we up to, well, we can plug in external data, so we have seamless integration. Uh, Qualify was built with extensibility in mind, so we can have seamless integration out to, you know, ServiceNow type um, tools, or JIRA, or TFS um, that developers may be using, and we can basically be a portal, so it looks like it's in Qualify, but it's, it's, it's actually somewhere else. So, you know, whatever information you want, we can very easily create the dashboards, create the charts, we can go through, and um, even at project level, we've got, we had a large customer who had multiple projects, not just IT based, um, and they wanted to use Qualify as a project management tool. So you could project manage and see where all the high level projects were happening, what status they're at. Um, where they were going through, but then if you wanted to drill down and it was an IT project, you could drill down to a much deeper level and, and see that information as, as well. Um, and then, you know, we'll go through to the standard style of uh, both UAT and QA, where you have pass the button type testing and, and 
people want to know what came before them. So this may be a standard ERP style test, for example, where you create a purchase order num um, and it's done by the purchasing department, or you need that purchase order number to be passed through to um, the, the reconciliation or fulfillment department who can then continue their test. And these people may be in separate geographical locations, and sometimes they may be in different countries. So we need a way, a portal of, of looking through at that information and easily passing uh, that data point through. And one of the bits I really like here is that what we're looking at is what we call a layout uh, and views within the layout. And you can click on a view and there's a button at the top that says produce a chart and it just does that straight away. You can then decide how you want to slice and dice that data. And if you like, like that layout, save it, give it a name, um, distribute it, or just make, use it for yourself. So it's very easy for you to get the data that you want in one or two places in exactly the format that you need. Yeah, and we, get, we empower users to create their own dashboards. So uh, not only can you have standard ones that you'll push out, but each user can create the view that they want to see when they come in in the morning. What do I need to do today? What's important to me? What metrics do I need? They can create that as well. So one of the key things that we, we're seeing at the moment is, as I mentioned at the beginning, we're getting very much the fragile, agile kind of methodology where the development will be done in agile, but then the different sprints will be grouped together into a release sprint, which is tested far more um, uh, methodically with the UAT people potentially before it's released or the QA. Uh, so we need a way of holding these methodologies side by side. We recognize not all teams are the same. We recognize people work in, in different um, ways, but with Qualify, you have a solution, one solution that will fit all. It can handle all of these models and it can handle them side by side. So um, that is something that's becoming increasingly prevalent <coughs> with our customer base. So just coming back to that survey for a moment, um, it was 68% of those people who responded reported frustrations, and of those 68%, 76% of frustrations were to do with limited or unsatisfactory functionality. Um, in some of the areas we've discussed also with things like import and export, we didn't want to particularly show you that, but we also have great capabilities uh, there. Uh, which is one of the reasons why we can also transition from ALM uh, very quickly and import data from that and move it directly into Qualify. So I think this is, I suspect from conversations I've had in the last six months, that this survey is now a little bit out of date because I think the level of frustration that we're experiencing is, is greater than that now that people realize that there are better solutions around that cost them a lot less. Uh, they're able to use more widely across a wider group of people and deliver much greater benefit for them. So maybe you find yourself thinking the same sorts of things. That'd be uh, interesting to know that. I did talk about a very special proposal to uh, offer you. And there are some terms and conditions that apply to this. Obviously, some, some limitations and minimums and things like that. But broadly, the original software at the moment is proposing to enable you to swap to the same number of licenses in Qualify for half what you're paying now in your maintenance charges. So no license fees per se. Uh, whatever you're paying now for maintenance, half of that you can adopt a much more modern solution, a far superior product which is being actively developed and enhanced and is in growing in power all the time and it'll cost you less than you're spending now. Now, there are going to be some implementation costs associated with that, which might mean that in the first year, it's probably the same as what you're paying now, but then the cost thereafter will be half that and will hold that cost for the first three years. And there are a few other T's and C's that uh, go around that as well, but broadly, it means that cost does not have to be a factor to um, prevent you from moving to a more modern solution. Okay, <clears throat> I think that's a pretty special offer because it's a, a way far better product than the uh, legacy system that you might be used to. So that's the um, 
end of the presentation. We said that if there was time, we would happily take some uh, questions. Uh, I don't know if we've had any questions, Mark. Uh, George, we have. Um, I'll give you the first question. Um, it is, which version of Qualify is needed to be able to utilize these features? Um, it's, it's all in the current version. Of, forgive me, I don't actually remember what version number we're on, but this is all active current stuff. Basically. Yeah, we don't, uh, I understand why, where the questions come from. We, we don't um, version in the respect of functionality. Everybody gets the latest version. Um, uh, so everything you've seen will be in the version that you would um, implement. And moving forward, we, we, what we do is we take in gen ideas from our different customers uh, for improvements, but then we don't build it for one customer. We genericize the improvement ideas and we pass it through to everybody, and so everybody gains. Uh, maybe there's a, another slight angle to that, but just to point out, there is a web version of Qualify and a, a full client version, and the web version does have slightly less functionality, probably about 80-85% of what you can do in the client one, uh, so some of these things might only be available in the, in the client solution if that's if that's relevant. Okay. Thanks, George. Um, and then the last question is, uh, how long will it take to move from ALM to um, to the original software solution? So in other words, to qualify. Um, yes. I mean, basically, it's very, as I tried to, to say at the beginning, it's very easy to import data into qualify. So the only time it would take really is how long it takes you to export your test cases if you still want them or any project information out of um, ALM uh, into Excel <laughs> and we can draw it all in. We already have models prepared if you want to go down the direct transfer route. However, I would suggest that you start looking at the extra capabilities you will get from Qualify um, specifically around the model and the multi-model um, application capabilities. You may have been constrained previously with um, a tight requirements, test plan, test execution um, type model with defects. Well, now you can open it up and you can literally hold whatever you want and you can make it much better to work for you. And in that case, there'll be a few data installed as well as the export import. But it's, it's all very quick, very quick. Okay. Thanks, uh, Jonathan. Um, I have another question. Um, is the standard solution, and I'm scrolling here, compliant with current healthcare regulations in brackets GXP, uh, in other words, for audit trail? Uh, well, the answer to that is kind of yes and no. The, the software certainly is, but of course, what's important in that is how you use it. So we have a whole lot of customers in, in pharmaceuticals and healthcare um, and many of those have used Qualify as part of a uh, FDA, GXP, GAMP type approved <coughs> process. Uh, so yes, it can it can deliver that uh, requirement, but of course it then depends on exactly how you use it because it's not it's not a fixed process. Qualify is going to be built to reflect the way that you want to work, but that has been approved many times in the past. Brilliant. Um, I, have, I have one more question, which I've actually forwarded to you, Jonathan, um, and it, it's for Mike. Mike, you know who you are. Um, I'll respond to you uh, under separate cover, if that's okay. Um, but I'm sure that the answer is yes in, in, in this case. But I have forwarded to Jonathan uh, for a more technical and, and detailed response, and we'll get that straight back to you. Um, if there are no further questions, um, it just remains for me to say thank you very much to George and to Jonathan for their time and, of course, for you attending. Uh, it's been great to have you here. Uh, we'll make the slides and recordings available to you shortly. Uh, if you have any further questions after today, please don't hesitate to email us. Uh, the address best to use is gwilson at origsoft.com. That's O-R-I-G soft. Dot com. Um, please take a few moments to answer a few, uh, few feedback questions that you'll be presented with after exiting the webinar. Thank you again, and we look forward to speaking to you with you again. Thank you.